A quick disclaimer. <laughs> reviews will now be unscripted. I must say the one thing that I really didn't like about doing reviews is the fact that they were scripted and the fact that I had to fucking claw away at a Google Doc and then say this sucks and then read it. And so instead we're gonna try me just talking. Uh, I am currently in the closet of my room to uh, reduce echo, as my friend Aaron said, but in reality, I feel like a fucking idiot. And I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled out in a week, so I thought, hey, I could record all of the audio for this review, and then just edit it all, make it look good, and post it while I'm recovering from my wisdom teeth, and so I don't sound like a fucking monster. Here's the problem with this, though is that by doing this, basically what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to ramble for about five-ish minutes, maybe shorter, depending on the sequence that I'm doing, and then go to another project on ShareFactory and do it again, due to ShareFactory's 50-clip limit. Basically, this is going to be a fucking disaster, because last time I had a script, so I knew exactly what I wanted to say, and usually I had enough clip space to do it. But here, if I just fucking talk randomly, I might say something that I find incredibly hilarious, and then I'm not able to put it in. So, this is gonna take a lot of fucking time on my end, because ShareFactory is dick, and I don't want to invest in a computer, or learn a new editing software, because I'm fucking stupid. Anyway, let's talk about Kingdom Hearts. Oh, get me a little cookie. A little, I'm glad this is what I'm listening to while I watch the ending of Kingdom Hearts, Aaron. Thanks. I would you rather watch the ending of- Fine! Fine! Jonathan wants to focus on the dumbass darkness bullshit in Kingdom Hearts. It's better than you fucking playing a video over your mic when I could watch it on my own! I really love my friend. Yes! He truly is a great power fine. And so when he said to me, Hey Jonathan, can you play Kingdom Hearts and share play it so that I can watch you play it and see your reaction? I thought, of course, friend. Now, I've never had any interest in Kingdom Hearts. I remember when I was growing up in church, I had a friend who talked about it maybe once or twice, and that was it. I never heard about Kingdom Hearts again until me and Aaron became friends. And he talked about how stupid it was. He showed me compilations of who will I eat ice cream with, and close the door of darkness, all that bullshit. And I thought, it surely can't be that bad. Sure, I thought the story could be garbage, but maybe, you know, gameplay and a little bit something else is truly why people really enjoy this series. And so he lent me the 1.5 plus 2.5 remix on PS4 which includes Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, uh, Birth by Sleep, Recoded, Rechain, 34, 35 days, and fucking some other thing. Apparently two of them are just like remastered cutscenes or something? I don't fucking know, dude. I'm sitting in a laundry basket in my fucking, in my closet talking about Kingdom Hearts. But anyway, so in June, no, May, April? Sometime in there during 2020, I decided to tackle Kingdom Hearts 1. No, that's what I was choosing right now, dude. <laughs> Just do it. Come. Come, kids. Gather around with me on the tile next to my jeans and this boxed dance, dance, revolution mat. With a little sliver of light coming through, i.e. the bottom of my closet as I talk to you about the story of Kingdom Hearts. Um, I'm probably gonna miss out on some things. I recorded this already and I already missed out on some things, so I'm gonna try to do better this time. So, we start on Destiny Islands. Kairi, Riku, Sora, they're all friends. Look at that. I mean, if it's uh, Riku and Sora both like Kairi. Don't forget, they both like Kairi. They want to share papu fruits with her, bro. All right, they're all, they're, they got their hormones going on. They're all, they like each other. Love triangle. Boom. Uh, and they want to explore new worlds together. They're tired of their current place. And uh, one night there's a storm, and, and Sora leaves home to go check it out. 
And oh my gosh, the dark there, there's like a storm happening on Destiny Islands. Oh my god, the darkness. Kyrie gets taken, Riku's like embrace the darkness or something. It gets flung into the air and suddenly Sora finds himself in Traverse Town and he's got the Keyblade. Meanwhile, in whatever the fuck world uh Disney's in, uh goddamn uh, Donald finds out, oh my gosh, King Mickey's gone. He's going to close the door to darkness, and yes. me and Goofy need to help the Keyblade user. Who could it be? Well, it's none other than Sora, who's in Traverse Town, which is our game's hub, with, uh, I've never played Final Fantasy, so I think it's, I think their names are Squall, Yuffie, and Tifa. I don't remember. I'll play it at some point, guys, okay? But... They're, they uh, they find Sora and they're like, hey, you know, like the Keyblade's like bound to you, dude. No one can take it from you. And, you know, like, we're like, you know, like, good luck, man. And uh, he also finds Donald and Goofy there. And so then they use the gummy ship, which is Donald and Goofy's ship, to uh, to go to worlds and close keyholes. Um, but uh, meanwhile, all of the your favorite antagonists from your favorite Disney movies, Oogie Boogie, uh, Maleficent is the main one, uh, Jafar, Hades, Captain Hook, um, did I say Jafar? I might have said Jafar. Uh, but all your favorite bad guys, they got, like, you know, like, what's that movie? There's that movie, like, Mickey Mouse and the Club of Villains or whatever, and, like, all the bad guys have a club that they're all part of, and they, they, like, yeah, it's like that. But you know who's with them? Oh Riku, my God. because nice. Riku is jealous, because like, <laughs> get this, Sora has new friends, he thinks he's cooler than me now, and he thinks he's gonna save Kairi, oh, he's just a kid, he can't save Kairi, I can save Kairi, he has the Keyblade, I don't even need the Keyblade, that shit's for bitches, I don't even need it, fuck, I don't even need it, fuck, I'm gonna save Kairi on my own, you know what, with the help of darkness, so Riku becomes a fucking badass and joins the darkness, and he's got a freaking heart symbol on his chest now, because he's controlled by the darkness, and he's a body for Ansem, who's the bad guy, because, and then he's helping them get all the princesses, because if they get all the princesses, then they can, like, do the last, like, they get Kingdom Hearts, and, like, like, yeah, uh, the story for this game fucking sucks, uh, there's so many moments of just, like, pure, like, oh my fucking god, uh, a lot of oh my gods and sighs, uh, were displayed out, and, uh, my friend trying to hype me up, like, going, oh, Jonathan, what's this? Like, what's happening? And for the most random shit to happen, and the most, like, what the hell. Um, and I say this, but, like, like, I was re-watching the footage, and, like, I saw Ansem, and, like, and, like, he gets spoilers, and, like, and, like, the light from Kingdom Hearts was, like, hitting him, and I was, like, I got goosebumps, man. Like, does that mean I'm, am I? <laughs> Am I? Kingdom Hearts gameplay is basically as smooth as you would think, controlling a boy, a dog, and a duck. Which is to say, it's a little janky as fuck. Uh, the main bulk is combat, obviously. This is a action RPG game after all. Uh, X is your attack square, it can become a roll later on, you gain different abilities as you go on, and you can use your AP or ability points to, uh, get which ones you want, mix and match. Uh, you get magic, you get basic magic, and then throughout the game you get, uh, upgraded versions of those spells. Uh, it's fun. In all honesty, the combat for Kingdom Hearts, I must say, is fun. When I first started playing, I thought, if I just press X a lot, I'll win. A lot. I actually have to put brain power to kick the parts like Because it's a baby's game and I'm a man. What? Oh my god. And fucking man me got babied and I got shit on. I fought this boss like six times. It was the first boss in the game. Like it was actually really, really sad. Um But after that, in honesty. Turning your brain on a little bit is good, because the gameplay is good. The combat, which is the main bread and butter of this game, is good. It's fun. But, uh, I will say... Okay, and also you can you can heal. You have items, which you can heal. Store magic, all that jazz. Normal stuff. You can summon, which is basically you can summon Disney characters to help you out. Each has a different ability. I didn't really use them other than Tinkerbell, which just heals you. But Donald and Goofy... Yeah, sure. Terrible. 
Um, if you give them items, they will use them whatever. They'll take like one thing of damage and they'll immediately use an item. Um, Donald will frequently do nothing. Uh, two instances I can remember off the top of my head of Donald just walking during a fight or just standing next to me while I'm attacking something. Uh, Goofy, less so. Um, but you are able to edit their, um, their behavior. So like, oh, I want you to do these attacks more often than these, and I don't want you to use your items that much, but they still use them all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, platforming. Platforming is platforming. Nothing much, wait for stuff, jump on it. You know, very, very small, you know, puzzles. Uh, there are trinity symbols around, which can let you get items. Uh... And like the the platforming's fine. It, it feel and like the puzzles. It feels like early two thousands, and it's not very creative. It's it's pretty lackluster. Um, but it's nothing terrible. What really comes in terrible is the gummy ship, which is how you transport between worlds. Uh, I believe I showed a clip earlier of the actual gummy ship, but I didn't show any of the gameplay. It looks really bad. It controls bad. It's not fun. The music is annoying, and you do it so often. You get the warp drive later, which allows you to just warp to worlds you've already been, so it's like awesome. But like some of these gummy ship segments are like three minutes straight. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's just it's it's not fun. It really isn't. And according to uh, Aaron, it's in two and three as well, so I am I am stoked beyond belief. Every time I have to re record this I can feel like the stitches of like my wisdom teeth holes like loosen. Alright, so now we're going to get into some world analysis. We're going to start with Destiny Islands, which is the first area after the little stained glass tutorial. Um, there, this place kind of sucks. Not much to do, and what there is here to do isn't really fun. And well, everything you do here is perfected later on. Uh, the cutscenes here are boring, usually they are boring. It's one of those where usually there's something so stupid that you can at least laugh a little bit. These ones I really just find dumb. It, I mean, it's setting up the characters, so you know it's understandable. Um, combat scenarios. You can fight everyone on the island except for Kyrie and uh, have a little combat scenario with them. And it's fun at the time. But looking back at it, it's not. Because Kingdom Hearts is a good game when it comes to combat. And here it shows off that it is not a good game, in general, because the combat here is so archaic, Just it's just jump attack, and so the combat here isn't fun, while in other parts, the gimmicks of bosses and your expanding moveset and also having managing partners becomes fun. But here the combat really isn't. And then, who the fuck likes fetch quests? Especially when it's just like, Kyrie's like, Sora, why? I need you to get me two fish, some water, and three mushrooms. And I'm like, you really think that I'm gonna open up the bag and get out the mushrooms that I got from the island when we're on a raft in the ocean headed to fucking Tarzan land? Traverse Town. It's the game's hub. Hub of the game. Game hub. Place where the game's hub. The hub of the game. Might have already said that, but it's the hub. It's the game hub. It's where the game is hub. Come back here often because it's the hub of the game. The game hub. Traverse Town is the hub of the game, and the Traverse Town is the hub of the Traverse Town. Is a fine area. Um, it doesn't. It's an original area like Destiny Islands, but it isn't really cool. There are a few shops here. I never revisited them. You were able to collect Dalmatians. I did not collect all of them. You are able to send postcards. I did not send all of them. You are able to synchronize. I did not synchronize everything. You are able to get summons from the fairy godmother. I only use Tinkerbell. You are able to watch cutscenes. I watched a lot of them. And there are two bosses here. They're both heartless. They're both fine. Nothing crazy. Fun. Little encounters. One I died to a lot because I suck. Um, and, uh, and a hundred acre wood is also here, uh, with Merlin. Uh, it's Winnie the Pooh land. Play the Winnie the Pooh minigames with everyone's favorite character, Winnie the Pooh. It, the the storyline on Hundred Acre Word is literally just Winnie the Pooh is a fat fuck and he's an asshole and he's gonna make all of his friends be assholes too as he robs them of their honey and you enable him because you're a bad person. 
Rabbit worked fuck hard you. to get that fucking... <laughs> Pooh's such a... Just a fucking stills of him eating it. What a loser. So now we're going to talk about the actual worlds of Kingdom no, Hearts. I, I um, <laughs> like, you know, Traverse Town is a world, and Destiny Islands is too, but... You know, like, you can go back to Traverse Town, but... Like, you know, it, it is it is mainly a hub. You come back here a lot. These other worlds you don't really have to revisit unless you want to pick up stuff that you were unable to. There is backtracking to get Trinity symbols, like I mentioned, and the Dalmatians that I mentioned, and to find postcards, and to find stuff to synchronize. But, you know, this is like, you know, we go there with the sole purpose of defeating Heartless and closing the keyhole. So, Wonderland is the first one, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, they get the aesthetic down pretty nicely, actually. It's uh, cool being giant and shrinking down and then going, you know, enlarging yourself once more to uh, change the scenery, and then as small Sora, you're able to actually do new stuff. But other than that, it's not really anything. Cheshire Cat just tells you what to do. It's, it's pretty boring and really is not a strong start off. Um, the Heartless boss here is cool, though. Uh, and the next is the Coliseum, which is very basic, it's just arenas. You just fight enemies that you fought in previous world and bosses, which, uh, the bosses can be Heartless from previous, but also there are some cool bosses that are exclusive here, such as Cerberus, Cloud, you fight Leon and Yuffie for some reason. Fucking Sephiroth is here. I haven't beat him because I suck, but, like, you know, it's, it, it, it's cool. Uh, you really do feel, like, a sense of, like, oh, that's awesome. Like, you know, like when Chip and Dale show up and they're like, oh, there's a new cup at the Coliseum. It's, uh, it, it, it's good. Now we're going to talk about my least favorite world, which is the third world, uh, Deep Jungle. Uh, I thought it was called Tarzan Land or Caravan or just Jungle. The parents called Deep Jungle, but it doesn't matter because this world still sucks. Now, I have no attachment to the film. I've never seen it. Uh, and I prefer Peter Gabriel to Phil Collins, but that doesn't matter. What matters is the level design here. Uh, the jungle is already not a great aesthetic, and it doesn't look great in this game. And when you have me backtracking in the same, like, four locations over and over, it gets really repetitive. There's the above trees. There is a camp, a field, and, like, hippo area. And they have you go back and forth and back and forth. You start in the trees, you go down to the camp, get some information. You've got to go to the hippos to go back up in the trees, to then go back down to the camp, to then go into the field, to then go in the hippos. And then you go back to the camp, and then you go to the hippos, and then you go to the fucking camp again, and then you have to go back up through the trees through this annoying ass fucking. It's like fucking up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. I'm entering the fucking Konami code in this fucking shit. Aladdin world. So now we're talking about Agrabah, the Aladdin world in the game, and I must say that this is the first good world in Kingdom Hearts 1, and something that, with my limited knowledge of the series, a Kingdom Hearts world should be. It lets you go through the story from the film, a little bit revised, a little bit tweaked, and lets you play through it with Sora, Donald, and Goofy. You just throw in some combat, you throw in some little baby puzzles, you throw in some of that dumb, dumb, dumb Kingdom Hearts story, and you've got a good world. It's, you start in the market, Jasmine gets kidnapped by Jafar. The market is a few layers, so it doesn't feel super repetitive while you're going around the same little bits. You go to the Cave of Wonders, rescuing Aladdin along the way. You fight the Cave of Wonders, the big, like, head that opens it, the big Puma, Black Panther head, and stupid. Um, it's a little gimmick boss fight, it's fun, not great. Uh, and then inside the Cave of Wonders, you are able to use Aladdin to do puzzles, which is something you couldn't do in Deep Jungle, and then you fight Jafar in human form, you fight him in genie form, and you leave with the magic carpet. And then the world's done. It's great. Agrablah! More like aggro good. <laughs> so now I'll be talking about two mid worlds, and what I mean by mid worlds is that there are only two Disney worlds left: Halloween Town and Atlantica. And then on your way to one of them, depending on doesn't matter which one you go to first, you will encounter Monstro from Pinocchio. Monstro will eat you, and there will be a world inside Monstro. Uh, I've never seen Pinocchio or anything. Riku takes Pinocchio and does some shit. I don't fucking remember. It's incredibly forgetful. Reminds one a lot of Jabu Jabu's Belly from Ocarina of Time, although the aesthetic in Jabu Jabu's Belly is better, and the final boss is better, despite the fact that they both look, like, identical. Um, and then Neverland, from either of those worlds, 
into Hollow Bastion, Captain Hook's ship will intercept you, and now you're in Neverland. Um, you really just battle through the hull of the ship, and you get two little bosses. You get against a like dark Sora that caused uh, a huge graphical glitch in my game, so I had to restart it. And uh, Captain Hook. Captain Hook is quite a fun boss fight. You get to learn Glide here. The Boat Heartless are really cool. Uh, flying around at the end is honestly quite a lot of fun. Neverland, despite being short, is quite sweet. I think one thing that gets missed out on me when it comes to Kingdom Hearts is I have no nostalgia for the franchise, but I also have very little nostalgia for the Disney properties and no nostalgia for the Final Fantasy properties held within. But the one world in Kingdom Hearts 1 that does appeal to my nostalgia is Halloween Town, Nightmare Before Christmas. I watched this film religiously as a kid, loved all the songs, loved everything about it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And the aesthetic here they nail. Obviously, not as good as the original film, because it has such a unique style, and it's claymation, and this is animation, uh, but it is nailed quite well. Um, the only, my only gripe with it, because it is fun, it's nice to go through it a little bit, my only gripe with it would be the boss fights. Uh, Oogie Boogie's boss fight is pathetic and really sucks considering how much I love him. Uh, it's bad. It's just not good. And then the second phase of his fight, while not bad, is just really platforming. And other than that, I would say the best part about this world is beating up Lock, Shock, and Barrel. I get to beat up children! Okay, so the last Disney property in Kingdom Hearts 1 that we need to talk about is Atlantica, Little Mermaid World. Um, cons, Sora doesn't know how to swim. Fucking sucks at it. Uh, the controls are just like gliding in Neverland. Only problem here is that there are much more obstacles. It's not super cluttered. There are some areas that feel more cluttered than others. It's just way easier to run into something and be like, ah, fuck. It can just get annoying. Pros of this world. The level design actually isn't that bad. Sure, there's a main hub and it's really cool that you can go around and explore it the first time. And things do change to yourself. You are able to swim up currents later on, and there is a dolphin that shows up that can take you to different places, and you kind of have to like, tr like track him down, uh, which is a fun little diversion. But it does suffer what Deep Jungle suffers, where you go to a place just to tell King Triton, "Yo, Ursula's doing stuff," and for him to be like, "No," and then for you to come back and be like, "Yo." Ursula did stuff, and for him to be like, shit, and then you get to progress. Um, but other than that, Atlantica is a fine world. Movement can be a little annoying, but mobile design here ain't that bad. Not a terrible water level. We're on the home stretch, baby! Let's get this done! Hello Bastion is the second to last world in Kingdom Hearts 1, and it's arguably the best. It's an original world, castle, lots of... Uh, Cool uh, switch puzzles here. Uh, that's fun. Enemies here are cool, except for this fucking invisible heartless that can suck my nuts. Uh, story in this one: Beast is here trying to get Bell. Uh, Donald and Goofy go with Riku because Riku takes the Keyblade, but then Sora's like, "I have a heart," and then like Goofy's like, "Well, shit, dude, he's right." And then the Keyblade goes back to Sora, and you fight Riku. Uh, but you get to play with Beast here. Beast is uh, the fucking best goddamn partner. Uh, he does so much damn damage. But you fight Maleficent here. She's a fun boss in both forms, honestly. And fighting Riku here in both forms is also fun. Um, really, the aesthetic here is really pretty. It's just, it's a yeah. nice looking it's world, it's one that I like, yes. that like, you know, you leave here, then you come back later, when I came back, I was like, this is awesome, and like, when you get to play as a Heartless dude, that shit's fucking cool, the only thing that sucks about this place is this fucker, whatever the fuck this is, I hate this thing. Oh, this, this button, see Jonathan, worst design. This is the end, do do do. Of Kingdom Hearts 1. This is the world, the end. Uh, the end has an awesome fucking look to it. The opening here that is, um, like this, this, this bridge you can't see that all these islands point to is cool. Um, these heartless that have these swords and like they go away from them and that's awesome. Only problem here is it's almost too combat focused. 
because after this cool little area, you just go through a gauntlet of challenges in each like world. You like, like you start out. I want to say you start in Traverse Town, and you do like a little combat scenario just in Traverse Town. You leave, and you have to go back, and then you go to like a hundred acre wood, and then you know, just goes through all of them. It's so annoying. Um, but then you fight Ansem, and in all honesty, I remember saying out loud. Oh my Who the God. fuck gave them the right to make this final boss this long? But I'm honestly glad they did because looking back, it's actually quite a good boss. You get to fight him once with Donald and Goofy, and then you get stripped of him. And you get to fight the thing you fought at the beginning of the game. Then you fight Ansem how he was last time with a few more tricks up his sleeve, except you're alone. And then he turns into a fucking sh like flesh ship. He's like a boat now. Ansem boat. And like, it's disgusting. And then you rescue Donald and Goofy and you fight them all together. And then fucking Mickey and Riku close the door, the Kingdom Hearts, inside, from the inside. But then Pluto's got a letter and we're like, we need to go get this letter. And like, then we go get it. That's the end of Kingdom Hearts. That's it. I've done a lot of shit talking. I'll answer for my crimes. But I want to say that Kingdom Hearts is a fun game. There are a lot of flaws with it. The story is stupid. The characters are stupid. Some of the level design is atrocious. Some of the sections are painstakingly boring and tedious. There's a lot to not like about this game. Most world, like, music tracks, you'll want to fucking plug your ears, dude. They just, they loop on and on and on. <laughs> But I can't help but not hate this game completely. <gasps> the combat is a lot of fun when it works. The animation is, in all honesty, very good, although the cutscenes may seem a little janky at times. Um, it's obvious that a lot of passion went into this, and it was a hell of a lot of fun to play this with my friend Aaron over... PlayStation's share play, and to have dumb reactions to the things that were going on. It was fun, and I'm glad that I did it. It's it's not bad. It's a fine game. 6 out of 10. Hey everyone, I just wanted to thank you for watching this video. Uh, I know that me giving Kingdom Hearts a more positive score was probably something you didn't expect. Jake? Jake, I'm sorry. Jake, we can talk- Jake, no!